Morning everyone, my name is Patrick. I'm going to be doing some work on my VR project uh, called Kilohoku. Today uh, we're adding some educational information for people who are not familiar with um, double-hulled Hawaiian sailing canoes and the scene view that we're looking at right now is the is the exploration scene essentially it's it's for people who know nothing about uh va'a or hawaiian double sailing canoes and who want to learn more so what we're doing or going to be doing today is i have a sheet of paper in front of me and we're going to be adding a whole bunch of colliders to this scene and then based off of that we're going to add a bunch of um we're going to add a bunch of information panels which basically will display based on what the person's pointing at and then based off of that, we will make some changes to the scene. So I was just testing things, making sure everything's displaying correctly in my view, which it appears to be. We've got some test uh, language there and everything appears to be okay there. So let me just make sure I delete this really quick because we don't need that right now and save my work in progress. So first thing we need to do is answer the question Spy High asked, which is, did you watch the PS5 live stream? And I will be completely honest, I have not watched the entirety of it. Only thing I watched so far is the, um, is some of the various game announcements. I haven't actually watched the live stream itself in any way, shape, or form. So let's see. First thing I need to do is I started messing around with this the other day and I wanted to add a um, bunch of colliders for all of this. And we're going to clean up things a little bit first here because this was just me kind of messing around with this. Um, so what we're going to do first is we're going to add a bunch of game objects for every single one of the colliders that we want to see uh inside of our game oh no this was kind of cool i actually got a um a working sail rigging working because i was just kind of playing around and uh if i take this and turn it on will it show i don't know if it's going to show do i have i have it disabled entirely and then we show it and it looks kind of wonky but when we play it uh if we go to this the scene view we actually have some realistic looking cloth which is kind of cool it actually like flows and stuff and and looks like actual sailcloth so how cool is that pretty darn cool i think it actually ripples and this was un totally unintentional i didn't mean to do this it just kind of happened when i was messing around it is clipping through one of the lines there but it actually will move if i take this this whole object and kind of uh, let's see, rotate it around here a little bit. It'll kind of move around, which I think is pretty cool. It's awesome. I've got real sailcloth action going on if I wanted it. Um, but that's not really what we're here to do today. Um, I just wanted to show that off because I figured it out and I was like, wow, this is awesome. Let's go ahead and turn that other sail back on. I wish there weren't 10 zillion of these things and it's hard to see like the one thing that I want to. There we go. Thank you. Oh, no, that's just a rope. Why was that off? This is what happens when you import models and they are gigantically complex and you're not the person who really intended to do it in the first place. I can't find my sale thing. Hey, how's it going, John? Nice to see you on the chat. Uh, I did watch the Unreal 5 demo in its entirety and I'm pretty excited for that. I actually started messing around with Unreal 5 a little bit recently. Um, and Spy High can talk to that a teeny bit, but, uh, where is the, the sail? I like lost it. Let's just control Z a lot. Hooray, control Z. Come back. Thank you. That's not the one that I wanted to. Are we all there? Okay. That's disabled. That one's re-enabled. There we go. Okay. Back to square one. <clears throat> no, Unreal 5 is not available yet. Um, only Unreal 4 something. Um, Kari did a bit of texture work. Uh, the sails do have a bit of, of shininess to them already, but other materials on here are more matte. So does the deck. Um, 
but that's not really what I'm, I'm focusing on today. Sort of, sort of Hawaii time zone friendly. They're more like late Hawaii time zone. Okay, so we've got a bunch of colliders we're going to build here, and I've got a list uh, that I'm just going to start building, uh, which is the hulls. Uh, so we've got a hull item, and we want to make sure these are all res set to zero zero zero, so I don't have to worry about it. Uh, we've got the. I'm not sure how detailed I'm going to be about this. Like if I'm going to do the port hull versus the starboard hull, because they have slightly different names. And then the hull itself has a name. An Unreal Team. <laughs> After work, hobbyist hide. Yeah, pretty much. <clears throat> and Spy High, if you haven't met John, John is a um, previous coworker of mine. He used to work at the College of Education and now lives on Maui. And I don't remember the exact group that he works with, but. He has a lot of experience doing uh, 3D visualization work um, and knows his stuff, so to speak. And is a generally all around kind of cool guy. I haven't talked with him in a while and I hope he is doing well over there with all the COVID gunk going on. So what we have to do is we're gonna start off with our list of colliders and that means me deciding just how detailed I'm gonna be with this. And I think I'm gonna just go the full Hmm. I think I'm going to combine some of these. And, oh yeah, and John, you should have access to a few emotes um, since I got some new ones in there. Well, let's see. I am just, I'm just going to go down the list. We'll go ahead and list every single one of them and then we'll figure out which ones we can, we can create. So we're going to create some empty prefabs here. Um, I'm going to take this sailcloth one and I'm going to just kind of move it down here because this is me messing around with things. We'll start off with the port hull. We'll create one uh, that is the bow end piece. I'm going to just do these in order here to make it easy. The prow, two, three. It'd be nice if I had this up on the screen. Um, a porthole, money here, the bow, the echo, the prow, the Akea, which is the starboard hull. Oh, let's see here. Yeah, porthole, bow, end piece, prow. We'll just do all of these. Uh, prow. And we can group them too, I guess. Um, Control shift N creates an empty. Okay, good. Create empty child alt shift N. Okay, alt shift N, perfect. Wish it would let me edit the name right away instead of having to do that. This is the starboard hull. And for those of you who do not know your Navy stuff, or your, I shouldn't say Navy, your nautical stuff, port is left side of the boat facing forward. And starboard is right side of the boat facing forward. Uh, and you use that term because you could be looking towards the rear of the boat. And if you're looking towards the rear of the boat, it's important to say, well, we're worried about the actual left side of the boat, which is the port side of the boat, not the starboard. Or And if you say left, you're actually meaning the starboard side, and that gets confusing. So we just say port and starboard for ease of use and making everybody's lives a lot less crazy. Okay, we've got the splash guard. Um, no, no, that's not what I meant to do. Control shift N. Okay, that just creates it random at the bottom, which I don't really want. <clears throat> Excuse me. Starboard a splash. Guard. And right now I'm just creating all these empty um, game objects because I'm going to have a ton of these objects floating around. And I'm going to add colliders to them, and then I'm going to kind of move them on top of their respective uh, physical parts. Or what I may do is I may duplicate the actual piece. Like this is the splash guard right here, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. And it has a mesh, um, and it has a piece that I can mess with. But it's kind of a pain in the butt to make a nice collider for this, so I may try and make one based off of the mesh, I can add a collider, and then I'll copy that into the actual pieces here. 
Now, the other thing I could do is it's kind of a pain in the butt to go and select like all of these individual pieces and then create new objects and then copy the objects. It's like duplicating everything. The problem is, is that this gigantic list of components uh, on on my mesh here, and pardon the background noise, that's the uh, trash pickup going on outside. The problem is, is that there are so many pieces to this, this entire component that me having to go through and pick all the ones that I really want and make sure that the colliders work for all of them, this is an insanely over-detailed model, um, is more work than it's worth. So I'm really just going to try and keep things simple and only select uh, the actual objects that I want. Or for things like the deck or the railings, I only really need one collider. I don't need a collider for every single one of these pieces, like this piece and this piece and so forth and so on. Um, fun fact, there are only windows on the left side of a ship. That's why they're called portholes. Portals. Dropping the knowledge. I have learned a lot, and I am very thankful to the people who gave me the opportunities to learn what I have learned. Um, it's really due to them that I know anything at all in the first place. Um, okay, so we've got our splash guard, which is this piece, this cross piece. And I'll, I guess I should point these out as I go. So this is our porthole, the entire length of this side. Uh, this is our starboard hole here. And when I select it, it selects both of them because they are one object uh, as far as the geography is concerned. Our prow is the front of the whole thing. The bow end pieces are these... Um, high parts here on the front, uh, these sort of sticking up parts, uh, also called the manus. Um, and then the deck railing, or the splash guard, I already went over that. So the next piece is the mast step, which is are these pieces right here. It's what the mast connects to, so to speak. And it doesn't actually physically connect. It's uh, The mast sits in it. Uh, it kind of props up into it. So we're going to need to make a mast step. Uh -huh. Mast. And I'm using for my um, naming convention here, camel case. Uh, no, sorry, all uh, snake case for initial caps. So first, each word gets its own capital word. Uh, next is the deck. Okay. Whoops. No, thank you, Unity. Okay, this is the deck. Uh, and we're going to delete this object because I don't want to keep track of all of those at once. So there's our deck. We've already got a hull, a uh, generic hull. We're going to call this the safety, yeah, safety railing. Okay. Uh, do, do, do. Railing. And that goes there. Mast, step, deck, safety railing. Okay. Camel case, that's right. Snake case is the underscores. That is correct. Looks like there's some nice weathering and staining on the texture. Uh, there is for the, the uh, docks, which I grabbed a texture for, and you can see the line where the texture repeats because I just kind of slapped this on here because I was lazy. Um, these are pretty clean. Uh, it's just a, a simple straightforward and I did not make these textures um, The artist who made this model is actually a gentleman named Michael Pye who works at NOAA um, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and he made this model as part of a grant for Bishop Museum um, and Bishop Museum and uh, Michael Pye gave us permission to use this for this project. So it's thanks to their sharing of uh the things that they have that we were able to get this model but we will likely replace this model because it is not completely accurate to the actual hokulea for a number of reasons this model is actually based off of a physical model that is sitting at bishop museum um and that physical model is not a super accurate reproduction of hokulea it's more just somebody's rendition of what they think Hokulea looks like. So some of the measurements aren't terribly accurate. Some of the Iako or the cross beams are not in the correct places. Uh, it's missing some parts and pieces. Uh, there should be more railing. There should be some railing that goes across um, on, at an angle from the railing down to the hull. Uh, so there are various parts 
and then this does this yeah i think this railing does go up and down the entire length but there are some inaccuracies and so it's a good stand-in but it's it's missing some things hi tropical pyramid everybody say hi to justin um ed white and my buddy are also here and uh, trying to get the ban hammer ready you are oh you are a mod i forgot hmm be nice he hasn't done anything yet uh tropical pyramid you're always talking about hosting now would be an awesome time to do that if you wanted to you don't have to just saying please gay thanks all right <clears throat> all right so we're just adding a bunch of uh, colliders unlimited power yes you can highlight those thanks to my um cone my cone counters okay so we have the safety railing we need to add the aft mast so we're gonna add the aft uh we'll probably call this mast aft because we're gonna have a mast forward let me see here coding this is not competition there's uh, anybody learning is awesome and i'm all in support of that there's no competition there really isn't you have to kill me it's the only way sir are we dueling with pistols at dawn or something uh okay i need to find the mast four mast aft mast and four mast okay so there is a kia hope and kia mua which is the aft and four mast yeah we'll call them mast aft and mast four just for whoops no i don't want to do whatever it is i just did thanks <laughs> Mast aft. Whoops. A small misspelling there. Also, if this text is way too tiny to see, let me know. I can change my screen resolution or something. No, swords like Highlander. Okay. I have sword training. I'm down with that. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. I didn't want it inside of it. I wanted it. What are you doing? There we go. Safety railing. Okay. Um... Pricing line, spars, halyards, forward mast. Okay, we're just going to keep going down this list. These things are not in any logical order on my sheet here. I'm going to try and find this really quick just so I can show it to you guys. Um, parts of the va uh, Parts of the Hawaiian canoe. Okay, this is a text list. Oh, yeah, this is great. Here we go. Um, maybe I can somehow just share this image is there a way for me to put this in a oh i know what i can do hold on a sec let me download this to my desktop and then we'll open it in a window and then we'll add it to obs like that and desktop Hokulea parts why it's so weird it seems to have disassociated everything okay so we'll go ahead and add this to my scene layout here in obs really quick uh can i just do an image um okay this is va parts and that's fine and the image file we want to do is on my desktop thank you open there we go you guys should be able to see that in the stream now and let me just move this to a place where it's kind of out of the way um so this is what i'm working with essentially is the parts of the va um so you can kind of see what's going on there cool thank you for confirming spy high so i'm taking all these parts and i'm just kind of listing them out and I was on the forward sail. That was the last one I did. Uh, mast, aft, forward sail. Okay, mast, forward sail, sail, forward. And then after that, let me get something to keep track of where I am on my list. Just like a pencil. So if you put a rebellious teen towards the back of a ship, does that make them aft punk? I'm not going to answer that question. Tricing lines, okay. Tr 
tracing lines. And the tracing lines are the lines uh, that hold the I know where they are. I'm just trying to find out where they are on the, yeah, these are the lines that are crossing on the uh, sails here. So they're what holds the boom uh, to the spar, essentially. Cool. And I know I could put my mouse over here, but I don't have it in front of me, so I can't tell exactly what it looks like, which is, I guess, problematic. The tracing lines are, oh yeah, they show up on there. Okay, you can see them, cool. I'll talk about things. By the way, if you're remaking the model, you should ask Jesse about teaching someone on the same photogrammetry. You could capture the actual Hokulea in 3D. It's not that hard. We have actually discussed doing that multiple times. The difficulty is getting Hokulea when she's not in the water and getting permission to go down there to do it. Getting her when she's out of the water is actually not that difficult. Getting the time and permission to do it is harder. Um... Mostly because there's so many people working on the canoe during the day when she is out of the water in dry dock that it is very hard to take photos of the va'a when nobody is there. And so we have thought of doing that. Um, and we've also thought Kari wants to, to make a 3D model. So we've gone back and forth on the options. The main thing that has also blocked us is we don't have a camera readily available to do the photogrammetry which isn't to say that there isn't one available it's just that the stars have not aligned for us to make that happen essentially but it is on our radar uh and we have been discussing um doing something like that okay we've got tracing lines we've got the spar which is this super tall piece on here and the spar is what the um mast and sorry the spar attaches to the mast kind of butts up against it but it's what the sail attaches to essentially so we need to add a collider for the spar you know i'm just gonna that was not what i wanted to do <laughs> thanks game we just want to add a bunch of game objects that we don't really care about so i don't have to keep adding these manually can i just do control shift n or is it just gonna th it's gonna throw them down there okay fine just make a bunch and drag them over here. Thank you. Good enough. All right, this is our spar. And the spar is going to go right after the tricycle. I'm going to take all of these and move them down here. In fact, I'm just going to go ahead and delete them because we don't really need those right now. We could loan gear on short notice. You have the right equipment. That's good to know. Uh, I will revisit that idea uh, with the... Hokulea folks, um, they're holding a um, training session this evening that I'll be in, so I can check on that at that time. Okay. Oh my gosh, this is all backwards. It'll be fun to do, but doesn't really seem necessary. The model isn't that far off. Probably quicker fix and do a 3D model and re-rig it. Uh, it may be, and that's that's one reason I think we're doing that. The re The one reason we were considering doing the photogrammetry was to get a super accurate recreation for historical preservation purposes. Um, and because the photogrammetry is like super crazy accurate in terms of you create a point cloud and then um, you can use that point cloud to then create a 3D model, but the point cloud can also be used to create a you know super realistic VR sort of thing. Anyway, there's a number of different reasons for each one and both have their places for sure. Um, right now we're focusing more on the 3D model options. So Halyard, um, we're going to call this the uh, horn, which is the top piece that all of the tricing lines go through. And you can see the multiple tricing lines. So the tricing lines, in order to pull the sail up or let it out, uh, a crew down on the bottom essentially takes these lines right here, undoes them, and then either lets out the tricing lines, which go through the pueo at the top, uh, which lets the sail out, or they pull the tricing lines, which brings the sail in. And that's how it works on uh, Hokulea, and sort of how it works on her sister vessel. No, her sister vessel, yeah, it does work that way also on Hikanalia, because her tricing lines are a bit different, though. 
because her tricing lines literally raise and lower the sails because they're on an actual track. Um, so the methodology for doing that is different on the two va'a, um, but Hokulea's rig is much more traditionally oriented. We are going to have the mast forward. Cool. Uh, we've got the mast forward. So we've got the stays and shrouds. Uh, yeah, we're just going to call this stays and shrouds. So the stays and the shrouds, uh, the stays are directly forward and aft of the um, of the mast. So the stay will be right here and it will typically attach straight down forward or straight back rear. Um, the shrouds are all the sidelines that attach to the mast and they are what grants the mast stability and transfers the movement pressure on the sails which gets pushed into the spar which is pushed into the mast and it distributes that effort amongst the rest of the boat and which causes it to move and does, doesn't let the you know whole mast just kind of buckle in half. <clears throat> there isn't or at least wasn't a lot of consistency across museums for scanning and storing digital copies of artifacts for preservation. Yeah, there's all kinds of different formats and people haven't really standardized. So maybe, you know, I can get a PhD out of that or second. I'm not doing a PhD though. That's not happening. Canvas covers, we're going to skip because we don't have them. Uh, cross beams, we definitely have. Okay. Everybody keeps teasing me. So what about the PhD, Patrick? No. No. No, no, no. No, N-O, no. You are welcome to put in the time for me. N-O. <laughs> I can even, I can even, I can even do this if I went to, oh, no, I don't want to do that. I could do emote only chat, but that'd be weird. No, 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 no. <laughs> Yeah, that doesn't sound terribly super interesting as it is. Okay, um, we've got cross beams. We have the keel. We've got the hull. And some of these will be combined to be the same thing. Um, the gunwale, which is the sideboards. Uh, does this... I don't think this... Whoops, I didn't want to do that. I don't think this model has the sideboards on it. No, it does not. So the sideboards would usually be, there's an extra paddle that goes down uh, on the side here and you can raise and lower it. And that is used for um, helping to keep the canoe biting into the water while you're doing turns while going into weather. And that's necessary to make sure that the whole Va'a doesn't just tip over by accident. It's not likely to, but it's just something you got to do. So let me make sure I have this right, though. 21 is the sideboards. Yeah, we're not doing sideboards. 22 is the steering blades. We're not doing steering blades. Uh, the Hoe Uli, however, we are doing. That is the, the steering sweep. Sweep. Okay, next we're going to do the end piece, so we'll do end piece stern. So we're going to call this end piece bow, just so we keep our naming convention the same. So bow is forward, stern is rear. You can go forward or you can go aft um, when you're walking on the Va. So let's take a look at this here. Solar panels, of which we have a few on Hokulea and many, many more on Hikianalia. So that's another thing that we want to do, is we want to eventually get more of the Va'akalua, which is the, the family of Va'a around the Pacific Islands, especially Hawaii, um, Aotearoa, which is New Zealand, Tahiti, Fiji, uh, Carol Caroline Cook Isles uh, and all of those different places. We'd love to get models of each culture's va'a and give you the ability to switch between them inside of the simulation. So that's sort of a long-term 
uh, goal of ours is to get that up and running because that would be really cool if we could do that. So we've got, did I already do stays? Sheet lines. So that's number 26 versus number 16. Let's take a look here. <clears> hmm. <throat> <clears throat> I don't think I have sheet lines in this one. Um, stays and shrouds, so there's no sheet line. The sheet line is a line that would attach to the mast and it helps you to, it, it attaches and it kind of goes down and attaches here. And then it, you can use it to secure the rotation of the mast because you're not your, your sails are not typically going to be straight up and down like this they're going to be more like they're rotated out to the port or starboard of the va and the sheet line makes sure that it is held in a particular angle so that while you are traveling it doesn't just flap all over the place and bang into people and you know the boom goes boom and it hurts but this model does not have sheet lines so we're going to leave that out uh so boom we definitely need the boom we'll make a few more of these really quick and bada -da. okay uh next up is the navigator's chair or the kilohoku which is the name of our project and that is this uh outboard spot right here the navigator stands or sits here and on, on hokulea it's more of an actual chair uh same thing on hikianalia uh, we've got the steering blades which we're not doing and then the aft sail okay so we're gonna do sail aft and then i think that's let me just make sure I didn't miss anything. That's number 30 on my sheet, and the numbers don't go any higher. Um, okay, I think we're good. So we've created all of our objects that we're going to be using to create the colliders for our pointer system to be able to point at something and make sure that it works. So first thing we're going to do now is we're going to create the script that makes our pointer system work. And to do this, I'm actually just going to take one of these boxes really quick and I'm going to set it up as a object that I can point at for testing purposes. And actually, maybe I should just, I'm going to rethink that. I'm actually just going to create a cube. Um, we're just going to create a little cube here. And we're going to move it into place so that I can easily point at it uh, for testing purposes. And we're just going to make it sit right here. I have a nice little collider for testing. Hooray. Okay, so we've got our cube. Uh, just kind of floating in space, not really doing anything. Um, and that's that's sufficient for our purposes. If I save this and I hit play, our cube should be right in front of me in the VR system, which it is, which is great. So next we need to find our script. Um, we're gonna add, we're gonna be creating a new script here. And I need to dig that up so that I can find this. This is the laser pointer script, I think. Which script was this? It's important to remember which script it was, and we'll just call this our test cube. Okay. Also, creating, going back to the chat, creating standards is actually really difficult to do because you have to get buy in from everyone. Um, we're going to delete that. Okay. So, our cube, we need to attach a script to it. And what we want to do now is we want it so that. When we point at the cube with our pointer, we want it to display text that is visible to the user telling us what the cube is. So we're gonna add a script and, whoops. Again, the problem is, is I don't remember which script it was. Um, highlighter, flash, no. Rotate, no. Okay, we're gonna have to load up the other scene because I just don't remember which script it is. I'm telling Dylan the standards of the real platform, so yeah, they're really hard. Yes, they are very difficult um, to get right. So let's go to our scenes here and let's load up our stargazing screen because that has what we want in it already. So this is our cool stargazing scene. Uh, we can load this up and you can actually full on see the Va'a floating around 
along with our our cool everything going on in our our whole scene here and we've got a really nice looking lot lo longitude changes uh, we can change our scene our teacher controllers in there and this is all on the screen here mouse interactable at this place at this point when I'm, whenever anybody mentions standards i'm always tempted to mention the whole like oh look we're gonna create a new standard in the xkcd comic where they're like once there was there are 21 competing standards let's create a standard that everybody will follow there are now 22 complete competing standards it just gets worse and worse as time goes on so what we want to look at here is we want to look at our um sky because our sky in this scene has a huge bunch of colliders on it and each one of these colliders represents a constellation we'll be adding hawaiian sea monsters no we won't be doing that there have been requests to add things like dolphins uh whales and other things breaching in the water and that is a very like nice to have thing it's not definitely not something that we're super focused on um so sky orientation we've got the spear so here's our target for the orion constellation and this constellation we have a detect laser script on the right hand side of our screen here and let me turn off this um va parts because we don't need to see that right now so we've got a detect laser script and our detect laser script we're going to open up in visual studio real quick and let me go ahead and get my thing set up so that you guys can actually see visual studio there we go they're non do we want to normalize them no i don't care about that right now thank you visual studio code so you guys should be seeing visual studio inside of the stream manager any moment now or already i don't know because i'm not a i'm waiting for it to show up on stream because there's a lag time not seeing it okay let me fix that really quick because visual studio scene may not be correctly attached to uh let's see here how do i oh yeah the program name changed that's fine let's correctly get visual studio there we go should work now and let's take this uh text size and let's zoom it in cool uh do 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 where is my zoom window tools you can tell i use vs code a ton are you still here justin what's the control for theory i figured it out never mind okay so what we have inside of our script is a number of things and um some of this is is just unity stuff that i've done to make life easier we've namespaced this whole thing to vrtk VRTK is our tool for um, interaction. It's, it's a freely available library online that allows us to essentially uh, do interactions in VR without having to code them all ourselves. So what we've got is we've got a highlight texture, we've got a default texture, we've got the game object we're, we're changing the texture on, we've got a name of the thing in Hawaiian, we've got the name of the thing in English, and we've got the info box where we're going to be putting the info. So what happens is, is when we start interacting with the object using our pointer, we swap out the texture and we set the name to the English and the whole thing and we start using the object. When we're done using the object, we remove the texture and we remove the text from our thing and then we basically do an update. So we're going to copy this entire script and alter it slightly because we're not going to be doing a few things um, that this object or that this script wants us to. So let's go back to Unity really quick. And we're gonna hop back to our other scene, to the docked explore scene here. And we're gonna focus on our actual canoe. And on our canoe, we have our uh, learning colliders and we're gonna do the test cube collider. We're gonna add a new script to this. So scripts we're gonna how do i create a new script oh we have to add a component new script and we're gonna call this script um let's see i think we called the other one laser detect laser okay we're gonna call this one uh detect new script please come on detect laser learning create an ad Okay, so back in, oh gosh, I don't care about line endings, thank you. Back in Visual Studio Code, uh, it didn't actually open the thing. We do wanna open it though, please. Okay, cool, so we've got our brand new thing here. 
I know a guy who works in recruiting at Unity, if that information is heavily useful. Thank you. Um, it may be. We'll see. Working in Unity is doing a lot of different things versus um, creating things with Unity. So it's a slightly different shindig. Uh, we're going to move our script that just got created into our scripts folder for simplicity of organization. And then we're going to go back to our script. Fine, just do it. I don't know. Stop it. Okay. Detect laser. Yes. Uh, we just wanted to open that, please. There we go. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and paste our entire thing in here so that we can save ourselves some headache. Uh, we're getting rid of the D. We're going to comment out the default and highlight textures because um, we don't need those. Um, and we're not changing the texture on any object. Um, what we are going to do is we want the. Um, we're going to change this uh, to be our. Uh, let's see, learning object settings. We're going to change the tooltip here. And I'm very, a lot of people don't spend the time to, um, they don't spend the time to make nice tooltips for their tooling so that other programmers have the time to do this. And I think that that's one thing that some newer, and I, sh I should say newer, um, programmers tend not to do but spending the couple seconds that it takes to add these tooltips and things so that when you're doing it in unity it makes life a lot easier um okay when so we're not going to be so this is the hawaiian name for the part of the va we're going to call this uh hawaiian what do we want to call our our canoe parts we want to call them we could just call them canoe parts. We could call them, yeah, canoe parts. Okay, and then the English name for the part of the va. We'll call this en canoe part. And the info box that we want to display the um, canoe part information in okay we'll save that can ponents no no we're not doing weird puns um we don't need that we already have vrtk interactable object uh, public class and we need to change the class name to detect laser learning because we want it to be the same as our file name and that's an important thing to do here because i've often found that um Unity complains when you start doing this. So we want to change HA to canoe part. Actually, these are not canoe parts. They're canoe part names. So, because they're names of canoe parts, not the actual part itself. So we want to call this um, Hawaiian part name and English part name. Another really difficult thing in all of this is naming parts. Uh, part name, uh, part name, and part name. And what we may do also is I may add an array of objects that I will add a texture change to so that when you point at the collider, the texture on the object that you are looking at will highlight and change um, to make it to give it sort of a yellowish tint. Um, I'm not going to do that right now because right now I just want to get the the pointers working in the first place. Okay, we don't need to worry about this. Uh, I am going to reactivate my um, game object info text. Is change that to part name. Oops. And we're going to turn this back on so that we have our debug info just in case we need to take a look at this. So that should be it. The script should be ready to go. Um, there's a lot of stuff I've kind of glossed over here having to do with the VRTK library. You can find the VRTK library online. Uh, and it is actually really, really well documented. Uh, it is in kind of a weird flux state right now in that they are moving from a version 3 to a version 4. And the version 3 
is supported but is not super crazy like available i guess you could say okay let's go ahead and give this a try then so we can go back to unity and inside of unity we can take a look at our test cube and our test cube should have our detect laser script and it has now just op um updated to show all of our options that we've added and all of this stuff is um we're not going to be grabbing the object uh, we're not going to grab anything. What we want it to do, though, is pointer activates use action because we want the pointer to activate as if we are using the object that we are pointing to. We do want the hold button to use. And you can see I put these um, nice things here. So it gives me a nice little mouse over now whenever I do this. So we're just going to call this a cube, um, Hawaiian cube, and we'll call this cube. And the place we want to display this information is inside of our VRTK SDK manager for Steam VR on the camera rig on the head. We have a canvas that has an info box and we're gonna drag that info box right here. And that should do the job, I think. Um, cool. Let's go ahead and give it a test run. Let me get my controllers turned back on. Because they turn themselves off when they're not in use. Okay, that's my controllers turning back on, and we'll go ahead and give it a go. And I can take this headphones off because I'm not actually using them. Okay, what do we got here? I'm just going to set this in front of me. I've got my controllers. You can see my controls. Uh, and I've actually got them backwards. Here we go. So this is my VAW pointer, and if I point at this, my pointer is not doing anything right now. Why is that? Is my teleport working? Oh, none of my stuff is doing anything. This is not good. Okay, I see buttons. Teleport, right? And this is... Exit to start? No. Well, that works. So thanks for that. <laughs> uh, pointer. Yeah, we want to load the exploration scene, please. And my point... There it is. Okay, so... It is pointing, but it's not activating. So something is is not quite right. Uh, so we need to figure out why that is first. Okay, cool. So our pointer object, we just need to figure out why the collider is not activating on point right now. Okay. And to do that, we take a look at other scripts or other th objects that we have that are doing the same thing. So we're gonna have to hop scenes again over to our stargazing scene. This is one small flub I have with Unity is that I can't have multiple scenes open at the same time. Uh, and it's kind of humbug having to switch between them when I'm doing work like this, but that's how it goes. Okay, we're gonna take a look at the Orion target and take a look at our settings. Is usable, hold button to use, pointer activate use action. Okay, let me screenshot this really quick so that I can just look at it easily so that I can know what my settings are. Actually, I need to move my Steam VR window out of the way. Go out of the way, Steam VR. You're in my way. Okay, there we go. Okay, now I have something to refer to. So we'll save this. Settings.png. Cool. And Okay, we don't need a lot of that. Was it showing me any console messages? Okay, it wasn't even showing that I was getting an intersection with that, so that wasn't really doing what I wanted it to at the time. Okay, let's hop back to our other scene. And let's take a look at our learning colliders and take a look at the test cube. And let's make sure that our settings are the same between these. Um, so all of that's unchecked correctly. Disable when idle is fine. Um, is usable, hold button to use, pointer activates on. Okay, so I think all I need to do is this, and that ought to do it. Uh, ignored colliders. Oh yeah, we don't need to worry about that. Allowed touch controllers. Um, 
Don't worry about that. We do want to set a layer to this, and we'll get to that later because we don't want our pointer interacting with everything under the sun. We only want it interacting with our learning objects. So we're going to create a layer for all of our learning objects over here eventually. Um, and then we're going to set that layer so that the pointer only points at that layer. And it may need to do that now, actually. Let's go ahead and check our pointer, actually, because it might not be set to the correct layer. Um, no. Oh, is it this? I think it's in here. Yeah, controller. Here we go. So the right controller is the one with the pointer, and it is currently set to ignore nothing and activate on everything. Um, it is ignoring the teleportation layer, which is good. Um, and it's working with all those other layers. So that should be fine. We're not going to mess with that right now. Let's just test it out and see what it does. Okay, we've got a cube. We've got a cube we want to point at. Uh, we got to point at the cube. Okay, sorry. Putting this on my lap for ease of use. Boom. Is it doing the thing? I don't know if it's doing the thing. I'm holding the use, so... And my teleporter is definitely working. Let's see if we're getting an error or anything. Uh, console is not detecting the intersection. So why? That is the question to ask, is why? Touchpad, hold button to activate the test cube. Info box, main text, yes. Undefined, allowed, use controllers, both allowed, grab, undefined, drop, anywhere. Let me make sure that my settings match, disable when idle. Allowed dot, yeah, that's fine, those are good. Undefined both. We're not grabbing, is usable, whole button to use. Override, allowed both. And that's the text we're changing. So, something is not happening when we do this. Collided with interact use. Oh, do I need to add the interact use script to this thing? Okay, I think I might be missing a whole script on the object that is necessary for me to be able to do this in the first place. So let's go back to our stargazing scene and take a look at our sky. Take a look at our target. Um, it has box colliders on it. Those colliders are not triggers. The detect laser is there, usable whole button pointer activates. And the right controller, interact use, pointer. Activation button is touchpad, whole button to activate, straight pointer settings, raycast. Okay, that's different altogether. Do I need to worry about this script? I don't know. Button pressed, do grip, do button two, do button two. Okay, no, that's not the issue. Let's make sure this is working in this scene just so that we have a basis for comparison. Uh, if I take this and I point it at the sky and I press this button, yeah, it's working. So we know it's working. Um, that's not the issue. Definitely, and we can do this and... Yeah, there goes the sky, it's moving. Okay. So we know it works. It's just a matter of why doesn't it work in the other scene? Pointer, do do do. Uh, this target has a layer of what? It's sky sphere is the layer. So maybe I need to change the layer so that it recognizes it and works correctly. Let's try that next. 
back to our exploration scene. Oh yeah, I could just click on the cube because it's right there. Let's go ahead and set the layer to sky sphere. We'll save that and we'll see if this works. Oh, I gotta rotate my face. It's it's hitting the edge of the whole world there. That's kind of funny. Okay, still nothing. It is hitting it. Um, it's just not activate. Maybe I need to activate it. Oh, let's try this. Okay. No, it still wants to be idle. <laughs> hmm. I don't know what it's colliding with over there either, because it is hitting something, like right there, which is kind of weird. Yeah, we we have we have an object, and we're pointing to it. Uh, let's take a look at our scene, and make sure that the text maybe the text is changing, and I'm just not seeing it or something. <laughs> okay. I'm definitely colliding with it at some point in time, but I don't see any text change occurring. All right. Box collider. Yeah, that's all set correctly. And these are the times where things just kind of go, uh, why? Why are you doing this? Um, hmm. Oh, hold on a sec. I got to close the window so that water doesn't come in. So we have a very basic object, and this basic object, let's go ahead and parent it all the way out of everything so that it's not like, just in case it's inheriting something that we didn't want. Um, let's take a look at our scripts and the right-hand controller. And it's got a pointer. Um, it's using the straight pointer renderer. Hold the button to activate. Interact with objects. Pointer interact, is that it? That might be it. If this is, okay, let's see what this is. If this is checked, then the pointer will be an extension of the control and able to interact with interactable objects. I think that might be it. Let's give it another go. This is why tool tips are useful and why you should use them. Boom, there we go. Our object, our, our pointer just didn't know. So now, just like that, we have an object that we can point at and it displays information to our viewer so that they can learn about the object that's being pointed at in context and go, oh, hey, this is a cube. It's also a Hawaiian cube. And we can use this um, to help purportedly, and I say this specifically, and John will definitely call me out on this, to purportedly help with knowledge, learning, and retention. And John's the one who's working on his PhD in um, educational tech. He's definitely got a better feel for this than I do and can can talk more about the literature um, so that's now that we've got our basic working thing which is really cool we want to add this to a bunch of colliders that we have uh, in our scene so that we can then point at the various different parts of our canoe and based on that uh, we can then essentially begin to be awesome and I think I know what it's hitting I think I had set up uh, what what is the collider that it's that it's bumping into? What is in my scene that it's that it wants to hit? That's what's got me confused. Like Yeah, I think it's hitting the uh the sail there. Okay. So we'll have to change that so it cannot be collided to. And I just expanded everything. Oh boy. Awesome, so like any good programmer, this is the point where you take a moment, you save, and you push your changes to your repository. <laughs> because you don't wanna lose the work that you just worked hard on, okay. Initial changes to add um, 
objects for learning colliders, as well as setting up script for um, collision detection. Okay, and when we publish those changes. Now, Unity added this a little while ago, and it's a really nice tool called Collaborate. It's free to everybody. Yeah, in case of fire, commit, push, then leave. Um, and ideally, your tooling is already set up to just commit, push. Like, and, and yes, there are dangers in just doing that, but that's why you don't work on the main branch. You do your work on a separate branch. Oh, man. Always do your work on a separate branch and then merge it back to main. I also do want to take a moment to address a bit of a thing that has been discussed in the community recently, and I think this is a pertinent and important thing to discuss, um, is the changing of um, git branches to move away from the master-slave connotations. I think it's very important and good that this discussion is happening. I personally like the idea of a main branch I also like the idea of a um, default, although default has some other odd connotations with it. Um, GitLab has a really interesting discussion going on around that, and I highly encourage you to look them up and take a look at that discussion. I know I saw it on Twitter at one point in time. Okay, so we've got that done. Um, so we've got the basis for our work. Next, what we want to do is we want to start building out the colliders uh, for each one of our learning things here. And we're going to do this in kind of an interesting way. Actually, before I even do that, um, let's go ahead and create our, uh, we're going to change this to test learning cube. Cool. We're going to create a new layer. Um, EQ, oh yeah, we're gonna call this uh, layer learning pointer. And we'll save that. And we're going to change it so that our test learning cube is part of the learning pointer layer. And the next thing we're gonna do, so layers are specifically in there so that we are able to dictate easily what things get interacted with when we perform a specific action with colliders. Otherwise, we would have like um, oddity with teleportations hitting all of our weird colliders that we're building and then our pointers hitting all of our teleportation colliders and it just becomes a mess. So we wanna avoid that. Uh, and that's why we work with layers. And we wanna go back to our controller. And we wanna make it so that our pointer will only interact with the learning pointer layer. So we're going to ignore, oops, hold on a second. There's got to be an easier way to do this. We're going to ignore every single layer. Actually, we want to keep the markers. That's one layer we want to keep. Uh, we're going to ignore every single layer except for the marker and the learning pointer layers. No, that's not, oh, that's not what I meant to do. I just uncheck, no, uncheck that, please. Oh, God. Okay, there. Cool. We've ignored everything except for marker and learning pointer. So ideally now our pointer should only interact with those things that are the markers, and these are the railing markers right here. Um, and these are used by the sailor or by the navigator. If the navigator is standing where I have my camera right now, and they look, whoops, hold on, which one's my rotate uh, view? No, that's the zoom. I wanna rotate around, <laughs> it's, it's rotating around the object is why. So if I'm standing here and I look to the starboard side of the canoe, the markers are each, if I'm looking directly across, and imagine there's like a pole or a flag here, each one of these markers is 11.25 degrees apart, and they each indicate a house on the uh, star compass. So if I look across, I get the exact measurements of my houses. And we have this here as a learning tool so that people can experiment with it and know how the houses were. So cool. Another thing I wanted to point out real quick is we created a very basic object for testing out our functionality. And it is a good idea to do this instead of taking a bunch of time rigging up all the cool stuff, making it look amazing, 
and then falling flat when none of it works, it's very important to test the things you want to do first, then go back and actually um, mess around with it. I see you have a master's degree. No, I totally don't have a master's degree at all. I swear. T. Okay, I'm gonna take five here real quick to go get some water and I will be right back and we'll continue on with adding our colliders and getting everything displaying and then making it so the text um, that we do display, because right now it shows up right in the middle of the screen. We're gonna move that to the side so that it's still readable, but not in the way of us being able to see what it is that we're doing. So I will be right back in a little bit. Come on, okay, there we go. Be right back. Okay, I believe we're back. Let me just make sure I turn off my secondary mic because we don't need to be listening to that at the moment. Okie dokie. One thing I do whenever I take a break is I do some pull-ups, so I'm a little short of breath at the moment because of that. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start adding the colliders for all of our various um, parts that we're working on. And apologize, I just have to write a quick email. Excuse me. All right. Also catching up with various other things. This is one thing about doing all this work is I tend to try to turn off all of my notifications because, man, there are a lot of people that ping you all the time. I'm just like, what the hell? Okay, we are going to add colliders. So um, another thing that I wanna point out that I've done is I have a multi-button mouse and I've bound um, the Alt key to one of my mouse buttons for making it easier to navigate and not having to um, remember to click my Alt button all the time when using my mouse because I can just use my thumb. It's so much easier. So what we want to do now is we want to go through and kind of group all of our colliders um, by the parts of the VOD that they are. Because they're some of these will kind of fit together uh, a little better than others. So for example, we have the hull, um, and then we've got the port hull, and we've got the starboard hull, we've got the prow. Oh, I didn't want to nest those under each other, sorry. Come on. Thank you. Oh no, gosh. Unity can be a little finicky sometimes like that. Okay. We've got the end pieces, um, which are also part of the hull. Let's see here. Where's the other end piece? Stern, end piece stern. There we go. We need to rename this one to match our naming convention. I thought I had done that already, but I guess not. End piece bow. Okay, deck safety railing. We've got our masts, um, which kind of group together. The masts and the spars also kind of group together. Uh, so we'll move these three kind of. There's not no real easy way to do that. Like we want, and then we've got the mast step. Uh, I've got our sails. Where's the stern sail? Sail forward, sail aft. There it is. So these these aren't specifically being grouped for any real reason other than um, sort of mental organization and making it easier to look at. Um, let's see here. Hull, sails. 
spar, mast, deck railing. We've got lines. There's a lot of lines. The horn is part of the spar, so we want to part of the mast. So we want to do that. Whoops. Okay, cool. Deck, safety railing, tricing lines, halyards, stage shrouds, cross beams. The keel is part of the hull. Boom, navigators, chair, steering sweep, solar panels. Boom is part of the mast and other stuff. Uh, deck, safety, lines. I want to put all the lines together. Okay, that looks good to me. And we're actually going to take all of these and just scoot them back out because we don't want them underneath right now. Okay. So now we need to start adding colliders. And we can add colliders directly to our objects. We're going to choose a really simple one. We're going to do the splash guard to start. Um, the splash guard is, like I said, this piece up here. And what it does is it keeps water that's hitting the front of the va'a waves or other things like that from splashing over into the hulls. Um, keeps a lot of water out. So we want our splash guard object, which we're going to focus on here. And it's kind of an invisible object right now. Um, we're going to move it over here to where our splash guard is. And let me just get this. Whoops. Sometimes one problem with doing that is that you can't get it super nice. Okay. Uh, is it good enough? You know what? I'm just going to perspective this. It'll be easier. Okay, cool. And we'll bring it up a ways since it's not um, like that. So we'll just put that there to make it easier to keep track of where it is relative to the actual object that we're editing. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a collider. Now... I can do this a couple different ways. I'm going to do it one way first, and I'm going to experiment with it. And then we're going to do it a second way, which is using the actual object itself and seeing if we can't get it to inherit somehow uh, and take the collider from that other object and use it. Um, so let's go ahead and add a collider. We're going to do physics, and we're going to add a mesh collider. And let's see if we can't steal the mesh from something else because look at this we've got a whole list of meshes here right so ideally i can just take this object whoops hold on well let's go ahead and highlight it so i know what it is it's p cube seven whatever that means and so we're going to go ahead and choose our splash guard we're going to go here and we're going to go p cube seven and there are any number of things that look like P cube seven. I don't think that's the one we wanted. Are there multiple P cube seven? Oh, no, 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 that looks right. Okay, cool. So P cube seven, uh, we want to try and attach that to our splash guard. Right, P cube seven. I think this is it. There's two of these. One of them is the hull collider, which is not what we want. We want this one. So we're gonna do that. And hopefully it's it's inherited the mesh. Um, now the mesh isn't displaying, so let's try making it convex. Okay, that's a little odd and not really what I wanted to do. Is it too big right now? Is that, no, no, no. Position, rotation, how about we, can we try scaling this? this is the mess gonna do, do, do? That's not gonna do anything. Well, let's just give that a try and see what it does to start. And this is, this is an experiment. I have no clue if this is gonna work. Uh, I don't even know if I, if I have a collider on the other object, which I may also try to see what it does. Um, by inheriting the mesh from this, we'll see if it's gonna be happy or if it's gonna just freak out or something. And if I make it convex and then I make it inflated. Okay, so that just doesn't do much. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and add our laser 
learning script. And the name of this canoe part is the Hawaiian name for the splash guard, which is the Pale Vai or the Pale Kai. And then the English name is just splash guard. And we should probably go with uppercase text. Pale Kai or polyvi, poly, chi. Then we need to add our info box, which should be this one, I think. I actually don't know. We're gonna hunt it down really quick though. Info box main. And just drag it right in there and it should be good. Okay, cool. So let's give this a test run and see how bad it is. Exactly, it's a master of mystery, I know, because I have a master's degree, or do I? Are you almost done with your PhD, John? I feel like you're like on that last, you're like in the last lap or something at this point, or you have to be, is what I feel. All right, um, I probably chose the wrong object to do this with because it's way over there, but we're gonna give it a test run anyway and see how it goes. All right. Okay, so we need to go over here. So we're gonna teleport over there really quick to make it easier. And we're gonna point at this thing and it is not hitting. So the collider isn't really working. Let's see what happens if I make the collider convex. I don't know if that's gonna do anything. Uh, it's still not hitting. Oh, I didn't set up the rest of the script correctly. Um, this is usable pointer activates use only if grabbed do not hold do not do anything else with it okay let's try now okay i'm probably gonna have to restart the thing because we didn't set it up correctly the first time oh oh i also didn't set the layer that would be important too see these are all things that are important to remember to do i'm abd the last hurdle's been tough due to life events making progress go awesome man definitely gonna raise a glass to you once you hit that because that's gonna be awesome all right um splash guard so we want is usable hold button pointer activates so is usable hold pointer activates uh wait 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 did i get that wrong hold only if grabbed oh got it okay swap those two Uncheck those. Save. And we're going to go and make that convex just for testing and see what it does. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. It is really weird how it chose to... It, it blows it way up is the problem I have with it. Like, there, the mesh is very simple. It's just a bunch of very straightforward small triangles. But... It's just acting strange. Okay, let's try it. I point at you. Hey, it's working. We don't have any text, but it is working, or it's colliding. As it is turning on, but it's not activating our our thing. Why is our, our text box not activating? Hello, text box, are you here? Did I lose my text box for some reason? As our console isn't logging either. Why you do this? It worked and now it don't work. Why you no work? It's probably because I changed layers on things and the layers are like, oh, I don't wanna. Info box main, yeah, that's correct. Okay. If I go through and remove this from being a sub object and then save, what you gonna do? Okay, it has something to do with the fact that it's it's childed. 
underneath something. So we're going to take all these colliders. I'm just going to move them out. And save. And we'll make sure that the parent layer of this is... Yeah, we'll go ahead and change the child, children of all of those too because it's easier that way. And we'll make sure that the safety rail... No, no, no. It was a splash guard. Our splash guard is set up with the same thing. Save it. And let's go ahead and test it. Hey, what do you know? So, we've now got our first object, actually part of the canoe, that somebody can point at and be like, hey, that's the splash guard. Very cool. Okay. And it kind of floats up a little bit because of the way that the collider is working. Let's try turning off the convex mesh, whoops, the convex tooling for that. Uh, oh, whoa. That's very strange. Let's re-add the collider. <laughs> that happens sometimes. You do one thing and then it keeps stepping on it. Uh, physics, yes. Mesh collider, yes. Uh, let's move this up here, please. Thank you. And let's re-add the mesh, which is P cube 7. Which is that one right there. And it really does want to be that huge now. Okay. Why is it making it so big? I wonder if that's the base like object and then it's decided to scale. Hmm. So let's try shrinking our scaling a bit. We'll make it thinner. Um, and then we'll just move it down. Like that, and then we have to expand it a bit to make it kind of fit. Sorry, I'm holding all my VR stuff in one hand while doing this with the other hand. And then I think we have to narrow it a bit because it's not quite, yeah, it needs to be narrow. Narrower. There we go. That's needs to be a little wider. And a little narrower. Ugh. And this is this is the drawback of doing it this way, is that the scaling of the thing is not exactly the same, and we're going to end up with a lot of like duplicates of the same collider. Ugh. I just want the scale on the X to be a little bit bigger, not that much bigger. Thank you. Maybe like 0 0.85. Four. Three. There we go. That works. All right. Let's save that and see what it does. Okay. So now we pointed the thing and we've got it and it looks good and it actually collides with the thing that we're pointing at. So that is amazing. We should be able to pull the cubes for all of those objects to do that. Or, yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to do that. We have to create separate, um, we have to create separate objects for each one of these. And the reason is that the, um, Because of the way the Hokulea parents and, and childs its entire geometry and the layers involved with that. I really don't want to mess with the layers on there. So we're going to we're gonna approximate a lot of this stuff uh, by adding the necessary colliders and all the parts uh, to make that done. Okay, cool. So our first one, our first real one is done. Um, let's go ahead and move on to the... Excuse me. Let's think. What we do next? Um, I want to try and check off the ones that aren't part of more complex pieces because the hull and all of those parts are all one part that need to be broken down into smaller parts and that's going to be kind of a mess so i would rather not touch that if it can be avoided let me see here next let's do the spars because the spars are very easy to add there are two of them 
The spars are the long top pieces. And what happens actually is that you take the boom off and you take the sail down, or you take the boom off entirely and you, you lower the spar backwards and down um, in order to attach the sail to it. So the spars come down along the length of the, of the va'a. You remove it from the mast step and you move it so that it's along the entire length of the va'a. So because we've got two spars, um, we're actually probably going to make child objects. And let's see if we can't, we're gonna add two colliders um, because we have two spars going on. And this is gonna become a little messy, I think. So we're gonna add the forward spar and the aft spar. So let's go ahead and create a spar forward and spar aft. And we're gonna use these objects. Um, I don't know if you can parent like I don't know. We'll find out. Maybe the, the colliders and the subjects will bubble up to the parent object and that will work. But let's give it a, a test run first. So the spar forward is going to be this spar, which is P cube 82. So I'm going to add the collider for that to spar forward. All right, mesh. No, no, no. Mesh collider. And it is P cube 82. And there are two of these. The one we want to use is the one on the polysail fix. And then we have to take this and move it and scale it and rotate it to its correct orientation, which is kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, we'll use the bottom there. We're going to use ortho perspectives here. Boom because this is just going to be easier. All right, scale it in. And scale it in. Oops, there we go. Okay, so we need to shrink it a bit. Whoops, I didn't want to rotate like that. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's kind of a pain in the butt that I can't. Oh, I can, I can. I can scale the, is this the Z? Yeah, there we go. And we just want to move it over just a tad. Okay, cool. And then we'll zoom in on this. That looks pretty good, in my opinion. So we're not gonna mess with that. Uh, awesome. So now we have to rotate the whole thing so that it tilts. There we go. I'm gonna rotate it like that. And then just move it over. And a little bit off. I think that's it. Oh, okay, now we just have to stretch it out in the vertical direction a little bit. So we're gonna just go up a teeny bit and then move it up a bit. And then move it to the side a teeny bit. Looks good to me. All right, let's uh, call that saved and change back to our with the graphic projection and yeah that looks pretty good and i don't mind if it's a little bigger than the object because mainly when you're interacting with things in vr um small targets are hard to hit especially at a distance so we want to make sure that the objects that we're interacting with are a bit bigger than the object um or than the thing we're actually pointing to so let's go ahead and add our script now it's this is the detect laser learning script we need to set up this this, this, and this, turn off these, Whoops. and then add the part name. And the part name of this in Hawaiian, I believe, the spar. 
This is helping me too, because I need to be memorizing all of these. Is the opea, and I need to turn on my Hawaiian language keyboard to type this, because this is in K. Okay. Oh, whoops. Oh, it doesn't recognize Unicode. Great. <laughs> All right, we're going to have to make do with what we have. Oh, can I at least type the... No, it doesn't even want to let me use the... Can I copy-paste it? Let's try that. We'll compose an email and we'll type it in there. Opea. Copy it. Paste it. Okay, cool. You just can't type it directly in Unity because it's weird like that. And that is the spar. Cool. Save that. And turn our Hawaiian language keyboard back off just because we don't want to be typing in Hawaiian by accident. And let's give it a test run and make sure that it's pointable and visible. All right. Um, let me get my camera face thing. Okay, pointing at it. Boom, we have it, but it's not this. Oh, because I forgot to attach the info box. See, there's always a bunch of steps that are easy to miss. So this is our info box main. Okay, cool. Try again. Okay, we've got a spar that is not displaying anything. Um... Let me make sure that I added the correct info box because sometimes it likes to I think it did and it didn't. Let's resave. Okay. Hmm. So for some reason we're not getting any text for that one. That one's working. Is that one still working? Yeah, that one's working, but that one no like work. Why you no like work? Usable, all set, spar, info box, chain. the pointer is type is correct. Oh, now it's showing it. Why is it now showing it? Did I, did I mess something up on the... Oh, I know what I did. I got these two backwards. That should work now. I swear, one of these days I'm going to get right the first time. I really am. There we go. Okay, so we've got one spar. Good. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Okay. So that's our forward spar. This is our aft spar. So we're going to add the same mesh component, uh, which is pcube82. And there's our spar. And we're gonna have to scale it the same way. So let's go ahead and go to orthographic. And, oh, hold on. There we go. I'm gonna move it closer to where our actual thing is and scale it down. Even smaller, right about No, come on. Ah. Very fiddly. I need to turn my mouse sensitivity down. There we go. Way down mouse sensitivity. Okay, cool. And let's go ahead and take a look from the front. I'm gonna definitely have to narrow that. And I think that is my X axis. Okay, we're good there. That looks great. And next we need to shorten it a tad and then bring it down just a little bit more. Okay, that looks good to me. And we will now rotate it to be on a correct sort of axis and just slide it into place. Okay, that's just a little off. Okay, let's see how that looks. 
That uh, looks pretty good to me. Uh, let's check the side view. Front view. Okay, it's, it's okay if it's a little big and not exactly on there as long as it's pretty close. Okay, I'm happy with that. We'll save that. And we'll go back to our projective view. We'll add our script. Detect laser learning is usable. This one, same thing. We need to copy the text from our other one. So we're just going to copy here. And whoops. Spar aft. There we go. And this is the spar. And the text info box needs to come from this guy right here. Oh, whoops. I deselected it again. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay, save that. Okay, and we need to turn these two off because we don't care. So it is usable. We hold the button to use it. We're not grabbing it, and we're just going to give it a test run. Boom! Got it on the first try. Okay, so our spars are done. Making good progress. And just to make sure we don't... Uh, Okay, so the question now is if I remove the script from these two and I add the script to this object, will it work? Or do I have to drop each of the colliders that I want in? That's a good question to ask. So. Let's try this. We're going to, because these are really easy to re-add, we're going to copy this so we don't lose the text. And we're going to remove uh, the scripts from both of these components. And we're going to try adding the script to the parent component. Uncheck these. Usable. And drive our info box there. And save. Let's see what happens. I just want to, I'm just curious if this is going to work or not. Okay, so it does hit, but it's not activating the collider like I want it to. So there is still a thing that needs to happen because it is, it is activating. Oh, or maybe I forgot to. No, it's detecting. Hmm. So the question is, how far do we go in trying to troubleshoot that? Because we've got two sub-objects, each with colliders. Um, and we'd like to be able to collide both of them and have them do the same thing without having to add the script to both of them, right? And the splash card, which is here somewhere, did I, did I, I just want to make sure I set the script up correctly. Yeah, that looks, that looks correct. So it probably wants to know if we go over to um, Visual Studio and take a look here. Uh, Game object name info text is this. Using object. Hmm. The question then becomes what exactly are we trying to do? We are trying to make it so that. Oh, time to do some Googling. Okay, thanks for stopping by, John. Good to see you. We should catch up another time soon. Okay. Uh...
So Unity 3D activate script on parent object for um, child collider. How to activate a child of a parent object. How to detect collision occurring on a child object. I've got this, 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 and this. Okay. Rigid body, you can get this out of the box. Character has a rigid body. Child has colliders, has colliders. On collision, enter means will fire on the game object containing the rigid body, reaching your parent. So if you need to find out which of them was involved, you can do this. Fire on the game object containing the rigid body. Hmm. Maybe there is a... Okay, so looks like determine collisions using interactable. Notice that they have both start and start grabbing. Sphere, second sphere. Okay. Detecting collision on the child of a game object. Yeah, I don't care. Just let me in, okay. Have collision when their children touch something. Okay, so it should just work. Um, did I make sure and set the? Yeah, that's that's correct. The part where the parent knows that it's touched. And as the correct info box set, let's try it again. Whoops. Oh, it seemed like, uh, no, no, no. Okay, so my text script is working too, because it's detecting the, um, oops little weird there okay it's it's giving me text but it's not giving me text for these so something is not firing in terms of the script that says hey your child objects are going off so and I think I've had VS code up this entire time sorry the thing we're worried about is when we're using the object let's look up vrtk interact use determines if the can be initiated or okay interact grab script on either the game object with the interact and touch any other game object to provide a controller events component. Allow access to. Okay. Maybe if I add the. Let's try this. Go back to Unity here. Whoops. Wrong window. Can I add a VRTK interactable object to this? Because this isn't this supposed to be parenting? Yeah, it is a VRTK interactable object already. So it's just not bubbling for some reason up to the parent. 
when it is happening because this is this is just a copy of this script done such that all right we remove that we don't need that component um K interact object child object. Google foo, don't fare me now. Oh, they made a full on uh, Unity Learn thing for VRTK. I didn't know that. That's cool. Add an interactable cube. Make sure you can pick up and throw the cube. Change the cube into a clamp. Modify the clamp collider. Okay. Placing the clamps. These don't look like child objects, though, is the problem. It is cool to see that somebody at Unity made a tutorial using VRTK, I like that. Uh, excluding children from interactable, grab parent object or child object. Let's see what this says. A rifle made of several parts. I'd like to be able to grab the whole rifle from any part except the magazine. Okay, nobody ever responded. Why don't people ever respond? I have an item set as in blah, blah, a few children, the pictures of which on the colliders. Only pick up the sword by its hilt. Set up so only your hilt has the interactable object script. It does not work. The script interacts with the colliders of the children. It uses the children. I mean to say only add to your hilt game object, not to the parent. Tried it. It seems that it was designed to be used as the parent object with the rigid body. Tried parenting the hilt to the, the script. No, okay. Add it to both the sword and the hilt with the hilt as a subclass. Set the hilt as usable. No, something, okay. PR should fix this issue. Different. Ignored colliders was not okay. Interactable rigid body get component rigid body. Script in the do 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 replace with. Hmm. So it looks like this was addressed sometime in 2017, but still not great. So I'm not gonna dive, like go nuts trying to do this right now. I'm just gonna move the script back to the sub objects, but it was good to try and see if we could figure out how to get it working such that the script would activate on a parent object that had the colliders of the sub objects. And I, I guess I could add two mesh colliders the problem is, is that I then cannot easily edit those individual mesh colliders. Yeah, we're gonna have to keep with the um, the sub objects having the script, which isn't ideal, but it's better than nothing. So let's go ahead and remove that component um, and re-add it to our children spar info box main. And I could probably actually go ahead and create, no, I haven't done that already. I already named all of these. What would have been smart of me to do is set one of these up and then create a prefab and then make the prefab and then add mesh colliders to all of them in that order. Things you learn when you try things a different way. All right, that's good. And then let's go ahead and re-add it to, oops, this one. you over there boom 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 oops and save and let's just verify that it is still working correctly really quick here all right okay we're good and we're good awesome making progress slow but steady Let's go ahead and save that and 
Let's see here. Oops. Do, 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 do. Hmm. Okay, VS Code should be off. Cool. Let's go ahead and start adding our horn colliders. So again, because there's two of these, we're gonna need to add one for each one. So we'll create uh, two empty game objects here and we'll call this uh, horn forward and horn aft. And the forward one is going to use a collider that is a mesh collider. And we're going to add the mesh of just this guy. Oh, it's the whole thing. Okay, so this is where it gets a little interesting. We're gonna have to create a custom collider because we don't want that entire thing to be our collider. Um, and we're gonna make this simple. We're just gonna add a box collider instead. And we're going to move this box collider over here. And then we're going to edit the box collider so that it is a good, happy size for what we're trying to do. Hey, Anna, thanks for stopping by. Everybody, Anna is one of the programmers on this project. Uh, you all should give her a follow as well. I don't know if she does or does not code, live stream code or not. Regardless, she's awesome and uh, is the person who basically made all of the really cool um, star map stuff that we have in the simulation as well as a bunch of other scripting work. So let's go ahead and make this collider. We're gonna edit the collider directly. Um, and to do that, we wanna pull top up. I'm gonna make it a little narrower. Uh, actually, let's go to ortho and get a head on view here. There we go. All right, we're gonna make this narrower. A lot narrower, and we're gonna make it taller. Whoa, no, ah, I hate it when that happens. Edit the collider, please, thank you. Make that a bit taller. Haven't done any live streams before, but maybe in the future, okay. Uh, then we're going to make this a little narrower. And then let's make sure that it is uh, wide enough. And actually, this is more of a, we need to move this over kind of thing than anything. Okay, and we're gonna just edge this part out a little. That part out a little. So again, we're not too worried about um, our object or our collider being bigger than the whole thing. We're more worried about can the person correctly click on it or point to it when they use it. Because we wanna make sure that uh, the usability more than anything is, is what we're going for here. So as long as the person can point to this thing and it looks good, then I'm not so worried about um, being like hyper crazy accurate with it. So I think that looks good. Uh, let's go ahead and add our script, our learning, uncheck, uncheck, check, check. And this is the horn. Uh, and the other name for the horn is the pueo. And that's just pueo. And then, uh, I guess we just call that horn, parenthetical for tricing lines. And then we need to add our info box so that it will correctly work with that. Cool. Okay, and as usual, uh, create and then test. So let's go ahead and get my head set up and change back from ortho to perspective. Looks good to me. And let's try pointing at it. Oh, I don't know. 
don't need that other controller right now. Okay, come here. Go up there. Point at the thing. Hey, we got a horn. We got a spar. This is really coming together. It looks awesome. We've also got a uh, Pollock Eye, the splash guard, and then we just have a test cube that I was using for some stuff. But we're making progress on being able to point at all the parts of the Va'a. I still don't know what it's colliding with there. That's just weird. But I'm going to find out eventually. Okay. Uh, I want to get this... I'm going to try and get as much of this done today, and if I don't finish it today, I'm going to try and finish it um, next week. All right. Cool. Let's add our box collider. And let's edit our box collider in ortho mode. There we go. Okay, and uh, ba ba ba. There we go. And that can be. Let me get close to this, which is kind of tough to do. There we go. We can get a little closer there on the sides. And then let's take a look at it from a Y perspective, and that can definitely be a little bit narrower as well. Okay, let's take a look at it from the side. And do we really want to worry about tilting this? No. No, let's, let's pull this out just a little, because we want it to be slightly larger than the object so that it's easy to use. Okay, that looks good to me. We've got a nice cube around our thing that we're pointing at. Okay, and then we're going to add our script. Oh, detect. This thing. No, no, yes, yes. And this is the poo-a-o. And the horn for tracing lines. And I want to make sure I typed that the same for both of them. Oops. Oh, I got a phone call. Just a moment, folks. I got to take care of this phone call. I will be right back. Okay, we back. I got to turn off my second mic again. Because it loves to turn on when I'm doing stuff. Okay, we were in the uh, middle of adding the second horn and the text info box. Kaboom. Done. Save. Awesome. Time to test. Let us test. Testing, testing, testing all the things. Hello, yay, we have a Puyo, or horn for tracing lines, but we should probably make the text be the same for both of them. Uh, we're gonna do uppercase for any named thing on the Va'a, so we're gonna stick with uppercase T, uppercase L tracing line. Okay, so we're gonna go tracing line here. Okay, cool. Is there a way to duplicate like the... Oh, I can copy components. We're gonna try this next time. I'm just gonna copy the component from a previous one and dive it straight onto the other one. Okay, so we've got the horn. Let's go ahead and do the masts. And the, our masts are already set into aft and forward and we're just gonna reorder. Actually, I have to drag this one below this one so that they're nicely differentiated here. Okay. Doot, 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 doot. Uh, we want to make our mast. And so we're going to create uh, colliders for this again. We're just going to create box colliders. This is the, no, uh, this is the, I want to do the forward one first, please. Thank you. Box colliders. And we're going to move you over here and over here. And the difference between the mast and the spar, the mast is uh, always forward of the spar on the boat. And the mast does not actually attach to the sails. The spar does. And the spar is this other object that we have behind the mast. And the mast is there to provide the, the thing that the spar kind of butts up against and give it extra strength. So it's it's like a doubling of strength, so to speak. 
going to edit this collider and we're going to do it in uh, ortho mode. So we need this to be somewhat tall. And we need it to be narrower. Uh, oops. Much narrower. Well, no! You were a friggin'. Stop doing that. Okay, here we go. That looks good to me. Let's make it a little wider just because. Trying to make sure everything's happy. And okay. And then we're going to rotate this whole thing. Uh, and then worry about getting our thickness correct on that. Okay. Let's edit our collider and bring it in. Right about, uh, yeah, we can still rotate this a little nicer so that it sits more like that. There we go. I am thinking this is okay. All right, let's go back to, whoops. Okay, I want to I want to extend the collider down into the foot a little bit just so that it um, does that, and then we want to make sure that our horn and our mast, yeah, they're pretty good. Okay, um, we're gonna widen that collider a little bit again too. So let's go ahead and uh, pull this out a bit, just a tad. Just a to noodle. There we go. And we wanted to extend the bottom. There we go. And we're just going to, whoops. Extend the bottom into it so that we don't have to worry about. Okay. Just past the bottom is okay. We don't need to go crazy there. And yes, again, it is bigger than the thing that we're pointing at, but I am okay with this fact. Okay, that was good. And we're going to add our script, but we're going to try copying our component. And then let's try... How do we paste the component? Component add... Paste component? Can I just paste? Why you no do? Oh well, it was a nice thought when I thought of it. Back to manual. Why not? Okay, and this is going to be our mast. This is our... our Forward mass, which is the Kia Mua forward mast, and we got our info box. Okay, mass number one is done. Let's go ahead and test. Create, test, iterate. Uh huh. Oh, I should probably uppercase Opea. Okay, cool. Good. Oh man, yeah. Okay. I think I'm going to do this for another half hour uh, and then we'll take a break. And I'll probably stream something else for a little bit for fun. Collider. That's our box collider. All right. Uh, where is that guy? Because I know he was... I just remembered something. Sorry! I'm totally not ADD at all, or the appropriate name thereof. Sorry. 
<laughs> okay. What I wanted to do was do this. And we need to move this over here, and then we need to mess with the collider. Uh, and to do that, we need to be on the correct thing, and then change it to ortho, and then have fun with. This would actually be kind of fun to make like a, a 2D platformer with. All right, up you go, and down you go. I wish that the colliders had larger drag handles on them, because it really is kind of a pain in the butt to do this. All right, uh, change our perspective to there. Um, zoom way in so that we can actually see what it is we're editing. And get the width just outside of those boxes. Coolio dealio. Okay. And let's go back to ortho and let's rotate our entire object so that it is nice and well, somewhat nice <laughs> nice is debatable okay and let's bring that in well no no collider editing in unity is a pain in the butt don't ever do it if you can avoid it i would rather just be happy and not having to deal with colliders all day long okay that looks good that looks good let's get this down into the base just a tad and i think i'm going to shrink this so that it it doesn't quite because the line at the top round wrapped around the top there is not super important to the usability of the whole thing so I'm less worried about that uh, i am going to take a look at my forward one really quick though and how yeah i kind of cut into the line there too so i'm not all that worried about it all right, our aft one should be good. Uh, cool. Let's drop out of that perspective and make sure everything looks solid there, which it pretty much does. Um, actually, that could be a bit... No, no, we're well outside the, the space for it. Okay. Let's add our script. Detecting all the lasers. Laser all the detections. And this has the same name of oh no, this is a this is a different name. This is the um this is the aft mast. And the aft mast. I gotta find it on my list my list here. Aft sail. Do I have an aft mast? Oh yeah, the, it's the Kia Hope. Aft mast, and we want to use our info box for that part. Awesome. And again, test and verify. Into VR we go. And we got a Kihope, and the other one is the Kiamua, and the Opa, and we've got our Palivai. Oh, it looks so cool. So the next thing I'd like to do is is to change the color on the underlying texture when you point at it. Um, and then maybe add a haptic feedback when you point to it so you know like I've pointed at a thing. That might, I, I've had mixed results with that. People who are used to, to games and things are all like, oh yeah, that totally is natural. Whereas people who are not used to it, the controller vibrates and they go, whoa, what just happened? And then they drop the controller and freak out. So I, I kind of go back and forth on whether haptic uh, for VR is worth it. Um, mast steps, we're going to have to create two of these again. Um, so let's create two empty objects. Um, and we'll call you mast step forward and mast step aft. Okay. 
and our mast steps are right here. There's our forward mast step, and here's our aft mast step. It's probably too high. I'm just kind of eyeballing this, whatever. Yeah, that works. Well enough. All right, uh, let's make sure that looks good. Do an ortho. And let's add our collider. Let's edit our collider. Just gotta bring it right forward to that, right after that. Top needs to come down a little bit. And so for this one, I'm not gonna get uh, crazy fine detailed on it. I could make a subset of box colliders such that there's like a collider that fits this smaller shape here versus the larger shape there, but I'm not, I don't really need that. So I'm not gonna go crazy uh, trying to do it. Um, as for this though, we actually, I think the rear view will be easy. Whoa, there we go. We can narrow this a tad. Okay, and we'll bring this up just a little bit to give it, we'll try to bring it up a little bit to give it more volume. There we go. Tiny dots. Don't make small targets. Make these things huge. They should be like these gigantic little square things I can click on, not... Come on, Unity. You guys do this stuff. Of course, the counter-argument to that is you shouldn't be editing colliders in Unity anyway. They should be part of the meshes that you import. But I didn't create this object, so I don't have control over that. Okay. So now we've got a nice little cube around our mast step. Um... And again, I could make it cleaner, but I'm okay with making big targets for things because it's not that important um, to be able to do this. One thing I completely think I forgot was, is this even on here? Deck, safety railing, mast step, is the net? Sorry, I'm looking back at my whole thing. I don't think the net is part of the parts. I'm gonna have to ask uh, at the class session this evening, what is the name for the net on the VAA? so that we can add that. Okay, done with our collider, add our uh, script. Boom, 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 boom. And this is called the mast step. And the mast step is called the Kumu Kia. And we're at our info box. Okay, we'll go ahead and do the other one. Add our box collider. We'll edit our box collider and we'll make it big. And bring it up. And check our perspective and make it narrower. Oakley dokely, and we can bring that down just a tad there. Okay, and let's look up top down. Yeah, that looks good. All right. Script away. So this is just kind of the part where you sit here and you grind through this because you've got to do this 20 zillion times. Um, I don't know, messed up, Kumukima. And part of the... Um, Part of this would be nice if I had created a prefab and then I could just take my prefab and edit it 10 zillion times. Um, but there's so few of these and they're all so different that I can't easily do that. So we're kind of stuck um, just making these prefabs by hand. So let's go ahead and test out our masked steps and make sure that they show up in our testing. Let's make sure we can even point to one. Okay, Kumukia and Kumukia. More and more parts showing up in the va. Uh, it's going well. Cool stuff. Okay. Now we can delete that.
Okay. Okay, uh, next. Next, we can do the deck. The deck is really, really easy to do. It's just a big, gigantic, look at me, I'm a collider. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, okay, box. And let's get some nice, whoops. And we're gonna need to make this pretty big. So we'll go up there. And all the way back there. I'm gonna make you smaller like that, and probably uh, like that. And let's go for the back perspective. It needs to be as wide as the deck. Like that. And we don't really need the bottom to be very big. Okay. Okay, yeah, that's too far out. Bring you in a tad there. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. And I'm having it float a little bit above the deck on purpose because uh, I don't want to. Yeah, it should just work. Okay, cool. Detect lasers. And the name for the deck is the Pola. And then we add that. And let's test it. I might have to stand up for this one so that I can actually get high enough. I'll get perspective. Oh, no worky. I forgot to set the... Always forgetting to do things. And unfortunately, our deck is colliding with our other thing. So we need to change the layer so that those two layers don't collide and freak out our um, <laughs> our other stuff. So that should work now. But why is it colliding? It shouldn't collide. They should be on different layers. Um, let's take a look at you. You should be on the layer of rudder only. And how do you edit? Let's see. Layers, layers, layers. What I want to do is I want to make sure that this layer and that layer don't intersect with each other. And I'm trying to remember where the layer, oh, here it is. Edit layers. Um, sorting layers, no. Layout, no. There's There's a physics editor somewhere and I don't remember exactly where it is. So let's, Try and find it. Um, game on the component window, no. Hierarchy, no. Holographic emulation, no thank you. I did get to, get to do a pretty cool um, physics. Oh, Anna, are you still there by any chance? If you are, please speak up in chat just so I can show you something cool really quick. I think it's an edit project setting, then physics. Thank you. Yeah, they, they bury this in weird places. Okay, cool. So we don't want our rudder and our learning pointer layers to interact at all. In fact, we don't want our rudder to interact with anything practically. Uh, and we don't want our learning pointer layer to interact with anything. Just like our ground plane and just like our teleportation layers. Uh, okay, hopefully that'll fix it. Let's make sure. 
Oh, this is gonna be okay. It's not freaking out anymore, so I'm happy. Okay. Um, I wanted to show you something that I I managed to figure out, and this was just completely a fluke. Um, I was messing around and I created. Where did I move it? I moved it somewhere that it was easier to find. Okay, so we've got a sailcloth, and that's P plane one. We're gonna disable it. And I created a sailcloth that I have here, which I'm gonna enable. And I want you to see what this does um, when we play. It looks like real cloth. It's real. It, it, it moves and flows like actual cloth. So uh, I was just messing around and I figured out how to get the cloth simulator working. Um, basically, you set attachment points, and I set various attachment points, and I just did this as a quick experiment, so you can see there's some messiness. Um, but it hangs, and I set the points up here to hang, and then I attached it to the sides, and I attached it down here. So if you add any sort of physics interaction with it, so if I take this whole object and I rotate it, the cloth moves, right? So we could add a wind, or we could add some sort of other thing, and it just works. It looks a little wonky, I'll, I'll completely admit, but it works out of the box. So we can do realistic sail physics um, by adding some. Let's undo that. By adding some weight to the cloth, and you can you can add stiffness and use gravity and. Um, add damping and all this other stuff so it doesn't move as fast. It's I haven't even begun to mess around with it. I'm just really excited with the possibilities um, that came about from it just by uh, just by messing with it. So let's undo those changes so that the original object is back active. Cool. So I just threw that in there. Feel free to play with it um, when you pull down the changes um, and mess around with it later. Uh, I took, I, I cloned the object and I put it in the exact same place and then I added the sail physics to it after that. So I left the original one there so that we had something to um, to return to if we needed to. I'm really excited by the possibilities of that. It'll look really cool if we can make heavy sails and then add wind physics and be like, look, and then we add some rotation and some other stuff. Yeah, it'll be cool. I'm looking forward to it. Um, okay. So where was I? I was in the point of fixing the rudder, which I did. And we had added the deck and we didn't add, okay, we tested the deck and the deck worked. And we fixed the deck so that it wouldn't freak out our rudder or other objects. So we're good there. I think we're gonna go ahead and save this because uh, we've done quite a bit of good work. Um. So we finished the spar, we finished the horns, we finished the masts uh, forward and aft, we finished the mast steps, and we finished the um, the deck. So we still have a bit more to do. Uh, the hull is going to be kind of weird because all of these parts are different parts on the hull, and I'm not, I haven't decided how far I want to break these down. Like, do we really want to get into depth into depth of the bottom of the hull, which you can't even point at anyway because it's underwater? Um, the port hull versus the starboard hull, the prow, which is these front parts, the um, the manus, which is the end pieces that stick up and the tail pieces that stick up here. Um, I haven't really decided how I'm going to break those down yet. And then with all the tricing lines and the uh, the halyards and the stays and shrouds and the cross beams and all that stuff. Why is my cross beam object all the way over there? Why is my cross beam? Let's reset you to zero, zero, zero. You shouldn't be floating in midair. Weird. Oh, I guess it's because I moved my learning collider object somewhere. Reset your positions, all of you. I don't know why half of you decided, okay, we're going to move over there. Gosh. Don't do this. Silly thing. Uh, 
Okay, we look clean there. Cool. Yeah, you're fine. You're you're uh you're just you're taking the normal between the two of those. Okay, never mind. Don't need to worry about it. Uh sales are all good. Boom. Should not be there. We're gonna have to do two booms. The booms are gonna be kind of a pain in the ass because it's this curved object. So I'm gonna have to create multiple colliders somehow to really get a good intersection with it. I'm not looking forward to that. All right, that's correct. Those are fine. That one's fine. That one's fine. That one's, that one's not fine. Uh, the panels also need to be fixed. I could do those really quick, actually, because that's a really simple, straightforward one. So let's just go ahead and do the solar panels. Um, box collider. Cool. Let's edit our box. And we're going to go out this way. I'm going to go out this way. And then forward and aft. And then we'll flip down to the. Ah, we'll try to flip down to the back. Solar panels. Like that, please. Thank you. And squish that down and squish that up. Okie dokie. Oh, uh, yeah, I should lower that a little bit. Um, let's drop you down a tad, please. Thank you. That looks clean to me. Detect laser. Boom, 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 boom. And the solar panels are called the Papa Uila or Pua Pua Ila. I haven't really decided. Pua Pua. Oh, I can't type Hawaiian language. We'll, we'll just stick with this for now. Solar panels. And we'll add our info box to there and save. All right, cool. And we don't really need our test learning cube anymore. I'm going to leave it in the scene uh, so that people can take a look at it if they need to. Uh, it's going to go in our testing objects cache over here. We have a lot of those for various random things. Just in case. Okay. Let's give it one last sweep. Okay, we got our solar panels, we got our deck, we got our opea, kiahope, and we've got the pueo. We've got some mast steps, and we've got a polyvai or pola. And polykai. Okay, and that's all the things I added. And the spar, right? Yeah, opea. Op opea. Okay. Why did that boom? Oh, yeah, and then we've also got our... um our interactables, which are way too small to interact with easily. Ding. Okay. That's it. Put in a good couple hours of work on this, and we've made a lot of progress. About halfway done. Good thing is, is once this is finished, and uh, once some of our other project members who may or may not be in the channel finish some of the work they also have to do on this, we will be able to release this out to the public. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to getting this out there so that other people can play around with it and be able to um, explore and check out all the cool things uh, that we are hoping to be able to make available for this. So this will all be out soon. Uh, hopefully, we'll see. 
thanks by high for stopping by and uh watching and uh making some noise thanks also to anna for stopping by and making some noise we're gonna go ahead and take a break i'm gonna go get some lunch and then i'll come back and i might stream some other stuff we'll see uh what comes up and William was watching too. Okay, awesome. I'm glad that he did catch. I stopped and um, dropped him an email really quick so that he could see part of the project. Um, if he has any comments, please, if you are watching or were watching, let him know uh, to just drop me an email with questions or anything. Uh, and just so you know, Anna, uh, you, Anna knows who William is, so that makes sense. He's going to help us make some in-game um, like ambient music to add to the whole thing uh, so we can get some nice background noise aside from just our ocean sound. And we'll make an option to turn that on or off so that if people want a more immersive experience, they can turn off the music. Uh, or if they want uh, some background ambient noise, I shouldn't call it noise, some ambient music, they can turn that on or off. But I'm done making noise myself. So let's go ahead and take a look. Who should we host today? Uh, let's see who's streaming out there. In the wonderful world of friends streaming games. Oh, a friend of mine is doing a a fundraiser. So let's go ahead and give him some love. Kekum and show you. He's an amazing speedrunner. So please give him some love and thank you guys again for stopping by. I will stream more of this in the future uh, while I'm doing some work on it. Host channel. I did host channel. Just press the thing. I typed it. Oh gosh, what is it doing? Slash host, K-E-K-U-M-A-N-S-H-O-Y-U, go. Oh yeah, raid, that's what I meant to do. Thank you. Okay guys, thanks again for stopping by. Give some love to Keku. He's an amazing, amazing person. And I will catch you all hopefully later this afternoon. Aloha.